Hey guys, so I know I look tired but I have a really very good reason for that. I haven't been sleeping very well and I've just got back from rainbows and work so I do look very tired but I've had a rough week. Um, this video may end up being quite sad but my aim is for it to try and be happy. So from what you've probably guessed by the title already, this is about my dog. On Monday evening at probably would have happened about six o'clock we had to unfortunately put him down he was only three and a half years old and it's a springer spaniel and I am, it was very hard like I cried a lot I cried myself to sleep and I've still been on and off crying and still it's very hard to understand that it's happened really so I wanted to make this video as a way to remember the dog and just to, just to enjoy, remember his life tell us a few stories about him and everything because I actually wanted to do a video with my GoPro of him and the other dog out for a walk but I never got to do that so we're just going to see what happens really I've got loads of photos, hopefully a few videos I'm going to put on with this and we're going to see what happens but first I guess I better explain all to you so he ended up being an epileptic dog He's, so he had epilepsy, he had, he had a fit we took him to the vets and we found out that's what it was he got put on medication and yeah, a bit more, and then on the Sunday, so that would have been like the 13th, no, the 11th, I don't know, Sunday, the 11th, 13th, 14th, yeah, so it's the 13th on the Sunday. So on the 13th, he had like 9 fits in 15 hours, and then he had one, and then he had one that, he just had one when I was round, and then he ended up taking himself outside, he dug himself a hole, and he just stayed outside in the cold and, and sitting in this hole and he was just shivering and that's when we were like yes we need to go take him back to the vets he went to the emergency vets and he had a fit when he was there he had fits when he was there like nearly every hour he then got brought back to the local vets and then the local vet said that he went they managed to take him for a walk he was eating again but they didn't know what sort of that what damage could have happened he could have had brain damage he could continue having them so it was great for the just it was best for him so he didn't suffer to put him down which was really hard and I just want to like explain stuff to you so seizures in dogs are not uncommon um, and there's many things that cause it in many cases they can be a one-off with no lasting long-term impact unfortunately with how many he had it probably would have been some form of thing so epilepsy in dogs is a brain disorder that causes the pets to have sudden fits. It can be brought on by head traumas or brain tumours, but there is often no obvious cause for the condition. In this case, it's classed as an as idiopathic, I probably said that wrong, epilepsy, which can often be linked to genetics. Epilepsy is thought to affect about four in 100 dogs and most commonly starts in those between one and five years old of age. Um, so it then tells you what happens and then this bit I thought was quite important to like, say, talk about, mention, is that if your pet has a prolonged fit or many convulsions within a short space of time, there is a higher chance that they could suffer brain damage. And like I said, he had at one point he was having them nearly every hour, so the likelihood was that he probably would have had brain damage afterwards. And the only way you could test that would have made him suffer more doing all the scans and the MRIs and all the tests and that would stress them out and would have made them worse probably so there you go um, but there is also a risk that the body temperature will rise and cause damage to the other organs if the seizure lasts a long time very rarely pets will be left in a coma um, an early diagnosis or treatment to prevent and then it just says things that could cause them could apart from epilepsy could be diseases in organs anemia strokes high or low blood pressure so we don't even know what caused it, for caused these fits. We assume and he was epileptic because they did te some tests on, like blood tests and that, and they couldn't like really find out anything. And my cat smells because she's been eating, so they just didn't know. He had tablets. They started like they worked for a little while, and then just this one day, this like two days, they just got really bad, and it was just bad. Like I didn't want to put them down, but. We had to really like I understand that we had to so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about him and then maybe that will just tell you some fun, nice stories of him and everything and just talk about him because that's just what I want to do so 
he was he was born on the 1st of January of 2013 so next on 1st of January he would have been four which is what I, so he was very young to be put down but he did have a very happy life we got him in March and I think it was about the 11th or the 12th of March we got him it was a few days before my sister's birthday and it had been snowing and it was icy so we walked me and my sister walked down to collect him I got to choose him there were two puppies left and he was the more spotty one so I went for him and he was very swishy and I can remember that we had to carry him home in the ice and he was heavy for such a little creature he was so heavy so we had to keep we didn't want to drop him because we were scared to hurt him so we had to take turns carrying him down the road so we kept we, kept, we had him wrapped up in a towel and we just every few steps kind of thing we swap over just to make it easier to get home and one of the things I will never forget about him is when we got him home we put him on the floor and he just like dropped and laid on his stomach and then dragged himself along the stomach along his stomach and I could just still picture it and he was basically I can remember saying as well what's wrong with him is he broken because he was like a slug he just instantly fell and dragged himself across the carpet and we came to the conclusion was that he never um he'd been living on straw and concrete so he didn't know what carpet felt like so he probably was very confused for what was going on and everything but it's just like one of my favorite memories probably of him because I just, he was just so cute um we then got him a bit set like had him in the living room we then suddenly introduced the other dog and she was that one year, not even I think she was like nearly a year old by that point no she would have been about a year old by that point I think and um, so we introduced her and she fell in love with him straight away like they can't be they couldn't be separated off like the moment they you know like they were in love <laughs> like we think he thought she was his mum because he used to try and suckle her and she would look, look after him like if he was injured she'd lick him and just take care of him and she would do everything and then Gradually, when he started to have his fits, it would be her that would let us know that it was happening. Because, um, or even before they happened, she'd start to bark, and then we'd know something was wrong. So she truly did love him. They were, and he really loved her. Like he could not leave, go anywhere without her. Like if he had to go to the vets, she had to go with him to keep him calm. And they just had a really nice bond. Um, so yeah, we had him. We got him here in March and he was a little bundle of joy. He was nice and squishy and little. He was so tiny and he was very chubby. And there's another memory I can, I can remember of one time when we took him. When he was still little, we wouldn't put him in the car boot. We'd put him in the front seat. While my sister was driving, I'd have him in the front seat with me. And I can remember one time he was on the floor and he just, you got the gear stick and the chair. He put his face in between the gap and just went, like chub made his face really chubby and it was really adorable um so yeah we my sister tried to teach both of the dogs and train them to be good and well behaved and sit that didn't work very well when i could sit in that she like should do clicker training with them and that's quite good he enjoyed that one thing he can't he could never do was walk on the lead he was so excited to get to go for his walks that he would just pull. He wanted to go for his walk, he wanted to go for his run, he was so eager. You just The other dog would walk next to you, he would just drag you. He was just so eager to get outside and get to run. And when you let him off the lead, he was so happy. Like, he was smiling when he runs. Like, he has his tongue flopping out and he just has that big grin on his face running around. He was, it was just, he was really adorable. Um, People said we were very brave for getting a spring spaniel puppy to go with a chocolate Labrador because they're both full of energetic energy. However, he wasn't really energetic unless he was outside on his walks. When he was at home, he spent most of the time sat on the sofa. And we used to say he was like a grumpy old man because he'd just lay on the sofa. And he was content laying there next to us whilst the other dog caused havoc and everything. But he would play as well when he wanted to. Um, so. Yeah, that's a few stories about them. I'm trying to think of some other things. So we've had a clicker train, and I've told you about him walking. Um, I'm trying to think of other things. My favorite, like I said, my favorite one is just him when I when we first got him. 
but it was always a very cute dog, a very happy dog. And on the Friday before we had to put them down, like when I moved, I moved out in September, so I'd only been there for nine months with him whilst he was growing up, even though I ch like chose him. He was mine and my sister's dog. But I moved out into September and then I didn't really see, like I stopped walking, I didn't really walk him as much anymore. And like obviously weren't around as much to watch him grow up and everything. So I really do miss her. But now that he's gone, I kind of regret, I regret not going out on his walks with him and seeing him play in the sea and everything. I regret all that so much. But um, so yeah. I also kind of um sorry I'm just picturing him. So I moved out and everything. Whenever I'd visit he'd sit under the chair with like under the dinner table and he'd eat and he'd lay underneath and like he used to sit on your feet and everything and he'd always want him and the other dog would clean your bowls and you've eaten with ice cream and it's hard, like, I know it's only been a couple of days, but the, especially, like, I haven't been back to my parents since we did it, like, put them down. But the, the evening, the night we put them down, afterwards we went, I went around there for dinner, and it was so weird not having him under the chair, under the table, like, I don't know, I'm really gonna miss him. Because, because, I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional and I didn't want to. But the idea that he's gone is worse, I think. Like, I know he's in a better place. And I know he's gonna be here. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I know he's in a better place now because he's not suffering. But the idea that he, like, sometimes there's miracles and he might have got better. And the idea that I'm not gonna see him anymore. I'm not gonna see him run around and be happy. <laughs> I'm not gonna see his goofy grin and everything is just horrible. Sorry, Mom, but this is meant to be happy. I'm trying to remember happy things. And one thing I'm really grateful for though is that the Friday before we put him down, so it's like three days before he had, had the fits and everything, that the days before we put him down, my mum had to take the dogs on a, on a walk on her own, so my dad asked me to go with her to do it. And I'm so glad I actually got to walk him one last time because otherwise I would, that would have been one of my biggest regrets is that I always turned down the walks and that. So one thing I'm going to make sure I do now is that I walk, go for walks with the other dog and spend more time with her because in that way, I know if she actually eventually goes, <laughs> my makeup's going everywhere and burn in my eyes. <laughs> but when she does go, when she ends up going, I can then remember have so spent some time with her like I haven't even got that many pictures of him because I've moved away so I've only got a few of him when he was a baby and uh, yeah I've only got photos of when he was a baby I haven't really got many of him as an adult because I wasn't there for that part or when he was a little bit older than when he was a, a squish ball um but yeah I got to take him for for this walk and I'm so grateful that I did and he was so happy, he was just running around in the mud and in the grass. And there was one moment where my mu there was another dog coming towards us, so my mum took him and the other dog away and kept me on the path because I didn't have suitable shoes to be in the mud. And um, the moment the man came, I called, I called Max and he just came running towards me with this, this big goofy grin. <laughs> It was just so cute and so adorable, and that's one moment. That's something I was going to say in my head. That big goofy groom, that image of him running towards me, being so happy to come back to me. It was just. I hope I never forget that memory. <laughs> and it sounds silly because he was no further than a bow finger, and he's just a dog. But he was part of the family, and I, I get close to the animals, but for some reason I seem to have got closer. Like he seems to have gotten closer to him more than my other animals I've ever really got to him. And it's hard to explain, but that's what's happened. Like, I see him more as my dog than a shared dog, kind of thing. Like, even if I even though I wasn't really there, I still I don't know. He was my baby. And that's just 
it means so much to me. that memory. I'm so glad and grateful that I got to go for that final walk. <laughs> and one thing I've also thought to tell you all is that his name was Max, but for some reason I used to always call him Puddle Duck. I don't know why, just one day it came out, Puddle Duck, and it stuck. It was like his little nickname from me. Instead of all squishy, because he was a very squishy little face, he had a very chubby face. But for some reason I used to always call him Puddle Duck, and people used to be like, well, you don't have a Puddle Duck, and I'd be like, well, that's my dog. And they never understood why, but it was just the nickname I gave him, and it stuck, and I was like, and it was just, nothing else was going to be able to call Puddle Duck. It was like my terms of endearment, or whatever you call it. So, he was my little Puddle Duck. And another thing I forgot to mention is he, used to, he, has this, he had this crazy hair, like he had his tail feathers, and they were really fluffy, and he was just really fluffy, and his ears were super fluffy. But he had this really crazy hair on the top of his head and I used to like to twist it and make it into a mohawk or plait it because it was so long and so soft and fluffy and he'd let you do that like he really was the best dog I, didn't want, I wish I weren't crying because I've grown enough about this but it's terrible to be in there so anyway I'm gonna stop talking about him because it's gonna make me cry even more of um Basically, I wanted to make this video to tell you all the good things about him and to make, like, put pictures and videos up of him so that, that way he can be always remembered. And then that way, if I'm ever sad and I miss him, I could just sit and watch his video and I will have the stories of, again about him, about his crazy hair and his cute, goofy smile. And I can have all the pictures of him growing up and the video clips of him growing up and I can just watch it because he went too soon. <laughs> and I really do miss him already and I'm sorry. Like I know if we didn't get him he would have ended up being a working dog and he would have been running around and he wouldn't have got the cuddles, he wouldn't have got the long place of walks and everything. He had a happy life. It's just the fact that it's gone and I can't really I keep thinking on a wake up and it's just gonna be a dream because he wasn't because I didn't think it was a bad dream, it didn't happen. Like how could he not be really how I don't <laughs> understand how he could be here one second and then he didn't have a leg so it's just horrible <laughs> and I actually found a really nice poem that I think I'd like to read to you guys about it like just about it before I finish this video so this is what I found on Pinterest and it's a really cute poem <laughs> so this is where we part my friend and you'll run on around a bend gone from sight but not from mind new pleasures there you'll surely find I will go on, I'll find the strength, life measures quality, not as length, one long embrace before you leave, share one last look before I grieve. <laughs> there are others that much is true, but they be they, and they aren't you, a life fair, impartial, or so I thought, will remember well all you've taught. Your place I'll hold, you'll be missed, the fair I strode, and the nose I kissed, and as you journey to your final rest, take with you this, I loved you best. Like, <laughs> Again, like I said, I wanted it to be a happy video, so ignore the fact that I'm crying, and ignore the bad part of it, and just, I want to remember his happy times, his happy life, so all the happiness that uh, you could clearly see in the photos and the videos, the happiness of his crazy hair, and the goofy smile when we go for walks the happiness of this weird little thing when he could didn't understand the carpet and he would waddle around the happiness of it all not the fan because that's my aim i don't want to remember the bad parts of him in the cage of that i want to remember it being all happy before he had started having the fits and he decided i'm going to donate some money to some charities for the little dogs so that other dogs are going for similar issues and Going just to suffer suffering so that they can get the help they need. So the third, I've actually researched them to find out what the, where the money goes to because there are some charities that the money goes to mainly to the workers and the actual cause. So these ones I believe sound quite good. I will probably do a bit more research first. But the first one I'm going to put to is the Animal Health Trust, and they exist to fight disease and injury in animals, and they they 
Thanks to the donations, they can improve diagnosis, treatment, and prevention in horses, dogs, and cats so that are living a healthier lives. And their profit goes, I think, it's like from every one pound spent, I believe, it's like 95p of that actually goes to the course. So it goes to the research, it goes to the treatments and everything. <laughs> and then the other one that I want to do is the British Small Animal Veterinary Association Pet Savers. And this was is a charitable division of the British Small Animal Veterinary and has been dedicated to prove the health of the nation's pets. Uh, oh, sorry, I will sorry. By re and its aim is to relieve the distress and pain caused by diseases for which they, there is currently no effective treatments. Um, and it just tells you a bit about it and about what you can do. And they like do again research. They um they're more researching the products is um like on what to do they can do to help and for every one pound of theirs 95p again goes to the charity which i thought was really good so depending on how much money i can actually afford i'm hoping to do maybe 50 pound between the two or something like that i'm not really sure yet but i'm definitely going to donate some money because i don't want other people to suffer and go have to put down their pets because of these sort of things like it's horrible it's heartbreaking and it's definitely gonna take a while to recover from and the fact that I don't want the dogs to have to suffer and to go through all this like watching him get to how he was at the end was just horrible but like I said I'm not gonna think about that bit so there you go I will put the charities in the description below if you because you know you might want to um donate as well i'm sorry for the crying hopefully you understood me and hopefully with all the pictures and that you will just you will see how happy a dog he was how adorable he was because i'm always gonna remember him he was the best dog ever and if he's listening if his spirit is listening or if his ghost is around I want him to remember that I love him and it's always going to be in my heart so there you go I'm sorry again for how depend like how this video works out if it doesn't work out how I'm hoping it will thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video bye